Today I'm joined by Clement, who is the boss man of IAD, which is the new French self-employed model coming to the UK. Recently, they've just bought out David Lee, the self-employed estate agency from Hertfordshire. Uh, Clement, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure, Chris. I'd like to ask you a question of um, where do you think the UK property market will be at the end of 2024? We're filming this in November 2023. We've just had two months of interest rates uh, stabilization. Transactions are about 10 or 15 percent below what they were in, in 17, 18 or 19. Where do you think the UK property market is going to be in 2024? Talk to me. starting hard and trying to trick the Frenchman, right? <laughs> uh, gotcha in that one. Um, yeah, you're right to, to mention uh, macroeconomic data. We're studying them really thoroughly. And uh, of course, interest rates are stabilizing. Uh, they've not been moving for the last, during the last two months. Inflation rate, the latest data went out this morning and they were also quite reassuring. So I guess that the slight drop in prices that we've been observing in all the major markets IED operates in, um, let us hope for a volume recovery for 2024. Not huge, but a slight recovery. Um, my statistics think there should be about 885, 890,000 property sales in the UK. Um, you think that will grow, do you, next month, next year? I think that's going to recover at some point during 2024. Will the whole calendar year be positive compared to 23, but maybe uh, uh, somewhere half of the year, we may see some encouraging signs. What about house prices? I mean, I don't know if in France they're as obsessed about house prices as the British, because we often say that the, after the weather, it's the only thing that the British talk about. Um, you know, what's happened to house prices in France this year? I mean, this year they've kind of, in the UK, have stabilized down one or 2%, depending on where you are. What do you think will happen to house prices in both France and the UK next year? Um, in France, the downturn in prices has been a little steeper. There's a minus six, minus five, minus, minus six right now, and uh, not generating any rebound in volume because uh, transaction volume during Q3 24 will probably be somewhere around minus 25 percent 25 percent yeah. right come but there's like 25 percent on 20 to 2022 it is it is so that's very similar to what we've seen in the it uk is. yeah it's, it's minus 40 compared to the peak of the post covid burst very similar again in the uk house prices are not so much of an issue for uh, estate agents it's transaction levels um what do you think estate agents should do to get a bigger slice of a smaller pie uh, what we encourage them to do in all our locations is uh, think twice around the price. And we have a lot of training modules around, um, you know, help sellers be more receptive to a slightly lower price because to follow up on your questions on correlation between prices and volume, what we assess in most of the market is we still need probably a, a slightly bigger decrease in price so that the volumes come, come back up. So what we try to do with our clients, the sellers, and with all our agents, is teach them how to contribute to this realignment. In France, do you have issues with estate agents? Uh, in the UK, we call it overvaluing, where the estate agent will overinflate the price suggested to market the property to gain the business. Does that happen in, in, in France? It happens less because of the market structure. Have in mind that um, exclusive mandates in France only account for 45% of the market. Exclusive, so, what, exclusive listings? Yeah, exactly. With just one client, one agency. All of them ha are, all others are multi agencies. So when you have two or three estate agents, you know, we are fast learners at IED. I know that it's not real estate agents here. No, don't, to the don't say real estate. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, you, you told me that. I did too. And, uh, and uh, so estate agents in France, when, when you have two or three different agencies for the same property, it drives probably the price towards some, somewhere reasonable. So I, I, would, I would say compared to the 90 plus percent of uh, exclusive listings here in the UK, uh, uh, Southern Europe is a bit differently positioned. 
Do you think that's a good or a bad thing that there are more multi listings in France compared to the UK? Or uh, it, it's an endless discussion. I mean, on one hand, for any estate agents, an exclusive listing is more comfortable. And we have agents that only do this, but it's not our policy because we know that culturally speaking, in the countries in which this, this exclusivity rates is lower, we lose some mandates if we only accept exclusive mandates. So uh, we, we like both. And in France, are there such things as buyer's agents or is it just the agent works for the seller? No, 85% of transactions are uh, one agent, both for seller and buyer. But surely the buyer, you can't have the agent working for the buyer as well as working for the seller, can you? He's working for both. He's working for the sake of the transaction. But ultimately, I mean, in the UK, you can only work, you really work for the owner of the house. Yeah. You owe a duty of care to the buyer. Yeah, I mean, of course, technically, the mandate is signed with the, the seller most of the time. But the, the my point was rather around who pays the commission. And I think that philosophically, it's, it's a bit both except in Italy or the US, for example, but the law stipulates that you need to have one seller agent, one buyer agent, each of them sharing the commission. US is 6%, very different to the UK. What I'd like to do in the next video is talk about fee levels in the UK compared to other countries that you are in and what UK estate agents can do to increase their fees. Is that okay? Totally fine with me, one of my passions.